Hey guys, today on the Church Media Guys show, we're talking lighting. We're talking about going from a dull, lifeless image to a bright and shiny, vibrant image for your live streaming, whether you're doing it from your home office, whether you're doing it from your kitchen table, or whether you're doing it from your office at the church. And actually, some of the stuff we're going to be talking about would work well in a regular video room. So let's get started. Uh, but First, before we go any deeper here, if you guys want to learn how to leverage media and amplify the gospel and uh, change lives, then you should subscribe and ring the bell so that you don't miss a thing. With me, as always, is the lovely and talented Bill Jones and the mediocre at best Justin Nava. How are you guys doing? Cheers, everyone. <laughs> Hey, remember when I said that I always finish my coffee by the time the show starts? My gosh, you did. <laughs> that's that's horrible. <laughs> that's it. I'm done. You guys, this is it's just you guys. No, I'm kidding. What's going on, guys? Uh, welcome to the live stream. David, Chun, Rock, Sweet Valley Church, which we know is Gordon, FMG, Tommy, Chris, uh, DTM, Khalid, welcome all you guys and gals and whoever else is watching churches. Uh, we, we really enjoy having you guys here on the live stream to help shape the conversation. David asked, uh, his biggest issue is consistency. He needs to help. He needs help getting the same lighting every yeah. time, which is something I struggle with as well. And we're going to talk about here today. Uh, Dave, yes. why, when we're streaming, <clears throat> We know that audio is king. Yes. Like, there's no point in streaming if I can't understand you. We know that video is good because right. you can have clear video, but what importance does, does lighting, why should we worry about lighting? Let, let, me, let me do a really dramatic um, demonstration here, if you don't mind. So, I am lit. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I heard it as it was coming out. <laughs> That's going to be on our end of the year blooper reel. There you go. <laughs> I am well lighted. <laughs> I have a light right here in front of me at about a 45 degree angle or so. It's an LED um, and it's bicolor. So I've, I've gotten it just sort of dialed in to work with my skin. I've also got a light over here off to the side that's hitting me from the side. You can probably see my hands moving in front of it. But my camera is optimized to work with this light, so I think I have a pretty good image here. I don't hear anybody yelling and screaming and saying, Dear God, get that man off the screen, at least not for my lighting. But here's what happens when I don't have the light. Alexa, back to normal. This is bad lighting. It looks great behind me. I've gotten all that all set up, right? So I've got, I've got colored lights shining on the thing. I've got the down lights shining on it. You know, you can see the little church media guys, marquee back there. Got everything behind me. It looks great, but I am in shadow. I am dim. I am not And, and let's, lit. Remind, let's remind everyone, too, you're using, granted, it's been a few years since you bought it, but you've got how much dollars of equipment sitting in front of you? My The camera uh, when we bought it was about ten grand. Right now, if you bought it's about 10 years old, too, but if you were to buy it, it would be about... 2500 to 3000 or so but it's a it's right. a broadcast quality camera e i mean easily yeah so dropping more money on your camera equipment doesn't fix your lighting you're no. still going to be too dark what it does and, and do some people might even think like hey you look crisp yeah but you also look dark i'm not going to sit there and watch you like that exactly for what, 30 minutes like, what it's, it's, what an expensive camera does um especially it has, if it has a large sensor um is allow you to have uh better performance with lower lighting so, you know, I, I may look a little grainy and stuff, but it's not horrible. I, mean, I, don't, I don't look just completely muddy, but you can tell that I'm, I'm dark. But what happens when I turn it back on? Alexa, let's go live. Boom. So both of those lights have turned back on, and so now I'm nice and evenly lit. That is how important it is. It literally is that much, and a lot of us don't think about it we think, oh, I have to have a light on. But let me tell you, I do, guys, y'all know, I do a, a TV show for a local um, station here. Um, we do five shows, and in the that five shows a week, and in those five shows, we interview four people. We do these 10-minute segments, and a lot of them we've been doing over the last six weeks or so have been over Zoom. And we have gotten guests on that show that have been fantastically lit, and they look really good i mean they we could be shooting them in another room with a camera just you know going through the wall and and, and plugged into our our vmix system 
They look so good. And then yesterday, even, we had a guy that we interviewed, and it, it was about the quality light-wise that I had just a second ago when I turned off the, the live streaming lights, um, except it was on a webcam. And you guys know, webcams, when you have a lot of light and and you're nice and bright and everything, your webcam will perform really good. But as soon as that stuff goes down, he was muddy. It was, it, it, I mean, you know, as he would turn, it, it was like his face would smear and stuff. It just was not good. And guys, if we're going to be using live streaming and uh, video conferencing technology to do what? What did I say? To leverage media, amplify the gospel, and change lives. Then we need to make sure that the people that are watching what us and listening to the words we're saying and watching it are not sitting there going, why does he look so bad? Is there something wrong with my computer? Hang on, I'm going to have to reboot. Something's wrong here. I have to change, fix my monitor. Hang on, I don't know what's going on. You don't want them to ever be thinking there's something going on on their end to try to make you look better because you have not taken the time to make yourself look good. It's on you, the presenter. It is not on the viewer. And we want the viewers to enjoy what they're seeing and be able to focus on the message that we're giving. So don't give them a reason to go Ugh! and leave. Okay. I'm sorry. I just blew yeah, out let me, the, uh, the speakers there. <laughs> personally, uh, Dave, if you looked like you did all shadowy and dark, what I would do is the first time I tuned in, I'd be like, oh, hey, uh, I'll just turn my, my brightness on my phone up. Okay. Yep. Yeah, it looks okay. I can watch this. And then as soon as I exit the app, ah, my eyes, it's so bright. I, <laughs> I like a dimmer screen and I would turn the brightness back down. And then next time I watch you, uh -uh. I remember last time I had an issue, it hurt my eyes. Oh, there's there's a negative feeling automatically yep. connected with you. I'm 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 gonna watch it for a little bit, but you know I'm not gonna. Uh, okay, what's next? So you want to make sure that uh, we have we have that down. So let's talk about actually getting the lighting set up yes. in your in your home, your office. You know we say streaming at home, but really this just means streaming not on stage. Uh, so streaming streaming off stage, whether you're uh, at home, office, a different room in the church, a different room in your house. Uh, so let's talk about like some free options. What can okay. we do right now with what we have? to get better lighting. Well, a perfect example, believe it or not, is our buddy Bill. Um, if you guys look over to uh, the bald guy with the beard, not That'd the, be me. yes, that's him. Uh, Bill the Magnificent there. Uh, we are still building out Bill's studio at his house, so we're, we're not quite there yet. Uh, Bill is uh, about in the middle to, to back third of the room that he's in, and on one side of it, he's got uh, some windows that look out into his uh, his yard. That window is providing the lighting for Bill. And on a um, on a on a good overcast day, uh, like a like a bright overcast day, you know, kind of like a, a gray day, not not just the dark kind. Um, Bill gets really good light in there. When the sun is shining and bouncing off the porch and doing stuff like that, or if the sun is setting and he gets it from that angle, or if the sun is rising and he gets it from that angle, he can get some really good lighting in there. But um, if he's doing something for a long period of time, that lighting may change over time. You know, clouds come over and do stuff like that. But this is a perfect example of why um, why you should be in front of a window. You don't have anything um, to, um, like nothing is behind him. There's no lights or anything behind him that are overpowering or doing anything. Um, if he were to turn around and have the window behind him, then he would be in shadow. It would be a silhouette. It would be really hard to see him. And a lot of us are doing that uh, when we're like trying to do a Zoom call, you know, at our kitchen table and the backyard is behind us. And so it's all bright. And then you're in shadow and they go, I can't see you. And then, you know, and he's like, you turn the blinds and you get them out of the way. But there's the blinds are still lit. And I mean, it's just all kinds of problems and stuff. But he's got it shining right on him. And um, if, yeah, he has, think, if he has, if you have any other light in the room, do. Bill, do you have, say it again? do you have any other light in the room? Do you have like an overhead or anything like that? I do have an overhead light going on right now. Yeah. So yes. that's supplementing the light coming from the window and it's, it's working, but it could be better. Uh, yeah. And you know, uh, Dave, uh, y'all can go back and watch, uh, late 2018 when I joined church training Academy, uh, I turned on my ceiling light mm -hmm. and in my office and Dave was like, do you have a lamp or something in your house? And I was, a study light, I think is what they're called, or a floor lamp. A yeah, floor lamp. Floor lamp huh? And I said, actually we do. We got one and we ended up never using it. So I grabbed it 
and you suggested, okay, well, put the light behind behind your computer, or behind your camera, or whatever, put it in front of you. Mm -hmm. That'll light you up, but it'll light you up a little bit too much. And so to diffuse it, which is a fancy word for spread it out, make it a little more softer, a little less harsh, uh, we we got a uh, uh, tissue paper that you pack with a gift, uh -huh. like a gift bag, and you put the tissue paper on top. Yeah, the stuff you get uh, at the grocery store. Yeah, stuff you get at the grocery store. And I got a chip clip, and I or two chip clips, and I clipped the tissue paper on the floor light, and it looked so much better. So if you go back and watch late 2018, those first few videos, I am just shadowy and dark, mm -hmm. and then and then the lights a little bit better, and then and then I got the the. I don't know what you call them, the square, I, I want to call them cans, but they're not cans, but photo boxes, light yeah. boxes, light boxes. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's doing an even soft better boxes, job. Soft boxes, yeah. So, soft boxes, there yes. you go. So mm -hmm. uh, it, you can essentially make your own soft box, you know, those, uh, if you want to get a decent one, I think they start around 60 or $80 mm -hmm. on Amazon. But if you have a floor light or you can run to Walmart and get a $10 floor light, some tissue paper for, you know, 10 or 12 bucks, but you may already have it, so it's free, get a lamp. Uh, or a floor light, put some tissue paper over it, and uh, that works really, really well. So yeah. I consider that free because a lot of us have stuff like that. You can even experiment with your own lamp. Like if you have a desk lamp or a, a table side lamp, you know, hey, honey, I'm going to borrow this for a minute. Get your wife's permission. <laughs> Get your spouse's permission, if whoever it is. Uh, so I bring that over, and, 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 and you can light yourself that way. And the other thing that I'm really liking, and Dave, maybe you have some advice with quarantine – Children, child's at home, wife is at home, house can get loud at sometimes. I've been taking meetings and doing some live streaming in my backyard. Okay. And surprisingly, it looks really good. Sure. Uh, it looks certainly better than having a ceiling light on me. Oh, yeah. Uh, are there things we should look out for when we just want to stream from outside? Let's say I have, you yeah. know, I use my AirPod, but you could also connect your shotgun mic oh, to sure. your phone or whatever. Oh, yeah. How can we make the best use of light outside? The the best thing to do um, is is use like indirect light because when you're outside, in fact, anytime you're watching like the news or something and they're, you know, live on the scene, you know, um, especially like, um, like when you see someone reporting from like the White House or they're doing something where like, like all afternoon, this person is doing a report from this one scene or something. Um, they will, they'll be outside and you see cars and st stuff going by, but their lighting looks really good. If, if they're out there and the sun is shining on them, they're getting like really harsh light. That, that, that sun, sun is a fantastic light. I mean, it really is for, for doing video, but you gotta, you gotta, you gotta work with it and shape it a little bit. And so when it's like coming straight down at you, you're going to get these really hard shadows, and it's not going to look good. You're going to look harsh and hard looking. Um, there's this thing called uh, called the golden hour, and if you've done any photography or anything, or or if you're a videographer, you know about the golden hour. They they happen like at uh, like right around uh, sunrise time and right around dusk, and it's when the sun gets at a certain spot that everything is just like really even and great looking, and you can get some great photography and you can get some great videography, but you you you're working on a clock, you know. Now, what they do like in, in television and in movies and in, um, you know, the, the what's, what's the um, it, it, reality TV shows and, and like news stand-ups and stuff is they will soften the sun and they'll have like a, like a, like one of these um, expandable wireframe, like, like a disc, you know, that, that has like, um, like, like some white fabric on it. And they will hold that in between the sunshine and the person on there. And so the sun is coming through it, filtering it. Just like, Justin, you were talking about having the tissue paper over a lamp or over a shop light or something like that to soften it. And in doing so, they're taking that sun and they're evening out all that. So now you get this really nice soft light hitting the person and you don't get those really harsh shadows because the light is spreading out. Um, Doing something like that outside, if you have the equipment, is great. If you don't, then you can do things like let the sun bounce off of something and then hit you. So, like, you could be on your, um, if you have, like, a covered patio or if you have, like, a, a, a one of those umbrella tables or something that's sitting on your patio, you go sit out there, you angle yourself so that the sun is hitting the, the pavement and then, you know, it's bouncing up and hitting you a little bit. And maybe even depending on the, the, the type of, of uh, umbrella that you have on your thing, some of that light may filter through. You can also let it bounce off the wall and, and hit you. Um, 
just make sure that you don't have yourself like turned all the way around so that, you know, basically your backyard has become like you sitting in front of a window and you end up with like a shadow. So you can play with it. And the best thing to do is take your phone out there or take your laptop out there. Just kind of walk around, sit down, move around, get yourself positioned, and then you'll have the place that, that looks really good for you. And it can work out really, really well. Yeah. Um, one thing that I've noticed that I'm doing now that as I stream more from home and try to find other locations, uh, also for our standups is, you know, depending on the time of day, mm -hmm. I might stream from different locations. Like oh, sure. I know three o'clock on my back patio in the, uh, patio sofa looks really good and it does not look any better than at three o'clock. So if I'm going to go live and I don't have a set time when I go live in the hacks group or soon on Twitter, um, I'm going to sit in that sofa cause it, the, the, the lighting looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. Uh, if it is a uh, uh, early morning, um, it's, it's a little too dark. I've taken some like eight o'clock meetings, uh, one seven It just looked too dark. It wasn't that good. So I moved over to my chair, which is in a different part of the patio. And it looks a little bit better because it's getting a little bit more of that direct light from the sun, uh, in, in that morning hours. And then, you know, um, uh, <clears throat> your window might look better at a certain time. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you'll have to bounce back. And then, you know, of course, in the evening, you know, which light in your house is going to give you the best results. It might be the lamp. You might get a soft box. Um, so, you know, it's something I know it's another thing to think about. But once you get it done, you just know I'm going to go live. It's going to be at three o'clock. The kids are at school. Um, I'm going to make sure that whoever else is in the house knows I'm just going to I'm going to be in the on the back porch or whatever. And um, yeah, you can have that ready. And then the more control you have over your audio, the less things like the loud neighbor, the lawnmower, if you're using a good mic, it might not even pick that up. You just kind of have to play with it. You know, just, I mean, honestly go live in your Facebook group or something like that and just walk around the house and say, how, how do I look now? Let me tell you about my day. Let me tell you about this, uh, display I have here or why we have this quote on the wall. Like, you know, what does this mean to me while you're walking around testing it? And then you can watch the replay and say, you know, I really like this spot or I really like this spot or let's try this next time. This is a lot of times we, we get in our heads and we're like, if we don't get it right one time, it's never going to be right. Everything has to be done in iterations. And especially when you're doing it with low budget or no budget, you might need a few more iterations. That's the thing about money. It makes things go faster. Yeah, it does. And if you don't have the money to get it right the first few times, then you're going to do it free a couple of times to get it right. And we know some people that are used doing the same thing with live streaming. We know some people that are doing amazing things with OBS. Me and others, we use it a couple of times and we're like, I'm out. This is too much. I can't figure it out. I don't know. I'm overwhelmed. And uh. But honestly, if I sat down for a few weeks and played with it, you know, one Sunday at a time, I could probably figure it out and get it, get it done well. And I don't like messing with tech stuff. Uh, so, you know, you throw money at something, it can make things better. And we're going to talk about that with me when you have a low budget, some hacks you can do. Right. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you have better money, we, you can get it right the first couple of times. So let's, let's talk about that. So let's go into, um, th when, when have, you have a little bit of money, okay. what can you do? Well, I will tell you. Um, one of the things that I found out about that I really like, and this is, this is really good when it comes to, um, live streaming from your phone, uh, whether you're doing it vertically or horizontally, um, or when you're using like your laptop or like your computer monitor, I got a computer monitor right here, like right fairly under the screen. Um, I found this, it's about $20. Um, and it's a, it, it's, I don't even know the name of the, the company, Craig, Craig, Cracer, I don't know. It's one of these. It's one of these things that you can, you know, you find a supplier in China and then you put your your company name on it and they and you brand it. Um, but it is a ring light. It is a selfie ring light. And what's really cool is it's got a clip, so I can clip this on my phone. In fact, I will. I can clip this on my phone over the front facing camera, and now I've got a light that will hit me. And I want to show you guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna do my little trick again. Um, what, one of the things that's really cool about it, in fact, let, let me show you. Alexa, back to normal. Okay, so that light's gone off. Okay, so one thing that's really cool about this little selfie light is that it's bicolor. It has um, both the amber and the uh, daylight thing. So when you first turn it on, here's the amber, okay? And then there's the daylight. And then, there, or actually, that first one was, um, was both of them. So it was both of them, then am then daylight, then amber. Okay, so here's both of them together, excuse me. Both of them together, 
there is just daylight, and then there is just amber. But look at the light it puts off. It's not bad when you're doing it from a, let's see, I'll go back to the, to the mix. So it's actually not bad, and especially when you're doing it like from your phone, like doing a selfie type thing. Um, you can actually get some decent light when it's when it's within a few feet of you. Okay, if you clip it onto your to your um, laptop, you can clip it on like right over like where your um, little little camera is, your webcam. You can clip it right over there so that you're looking through um, the ring light to your webcam. It works out really good. It's like twenty bucks. Even if you don't use this on a regular basis, it's definitely worth getting and just having in your kit so that you can um, use it when you need to. Like like if you're sitting in the car and it's an overcast day and you just need to shoot a quick video or do a quick uh, go live or something like that, and it's really overcast, you can clamp this on and then turn it on and actually light yourself up a little bit better. Better than like having the dome light hitting you or, or trying to adjust your mirror so that one of those lights underneath it is shining at you. Yeah, DTM Church, I had a question. Um, they're using a ring light as well, but it always reflects back in their glasses. Sure. Yeah, Should and they put it higher, pointing yes. down, or how, yes. how do we do that? So, so here's the deal. One of the things that's great about ring lights, and the reason we like ring lights, is because it does. I want to take my glasses off. See if you guys can see. Um, <laughs> you may not be. Able Sorry, to see. I just have to point out for the listeners. You know how in The Simpsons, when Milhouse takes his glasses off and his eyes get tiny, and he's just got eye, he's just got beads for eyes. Yeah, that's how Dave is. That's how I am too, though. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah. Oh, and this is harsh lighting. Look at that. Ooh. Okay. But what it does is it is it 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 reflects inside your irises. Like and so you see the sparkle coming from your eyes. Ring lights are really cool for doing that. It's a it's a really neat photography technique. And when you're doing it, let's see if I can let's see. There we go. When you're when you're doing it from your camera, it can be really cool. Now when you have glasses, then you do get that reflection. Even if you have anti anti glare, like I've got anti glare on here. But you're still, you still can see it. Let's see. Let me turn my... You see that reflection, and it looks kind of green, yep. right? That's the anti-glare stuff. So the way to fix it is to get it up just a little bit higher. That's it. I mean, if I'm sitting here, you know, and it's, it's like right up there. So it's about a 45-degree angle, and it's hitting me, and it's a little bit smoother looking. Okay? It's yeah, uh, literally I'll have, that I'll simple. Have, uh, if you want to put the camera on me. By the way, this is what I look like. Oh, hang glasses. on. Let me get to your... Uh, <laughs> there you are. Um, what I what I've done, and I, I've done this in the studio, and I've done it elsewhere too, where where the glasses, where the eyes, if I look up, you see that glare right there. And I have anti glare too, uh, but I have my lights just just high enough to where it doesn't do that. But if they are like this, and and you can see the ring light, what I'll do is it's hardly noticeable on camera. Just give them a little bit of tilt, just like that. You see that? I didn't move my head. All I did was move my glasses from here to here. You can't. You probably can't even tell on this camera if you're watching on a small enough device. I'll do it one more time. See the lights? I'm just going to tilt my the back of my glasses up just a little bit. Now, I can still see. Uh, obviously, if I look down, it, you can kind of tell a little bit. But um, if it, just moving your glasses, the back of your glasses up just a little bit, you can still see. The glasses still look normal. Um, it, you have to have a little bit tighter frames. If they're super loose, they probably won't snug against your head to hold. Uh, you might have to find something else to work with, but just tilting your glasses down. I've seen people too. They bring them down to their nose, do the old Chuck Schumer. And, uh, you know, that, <laughs> <laughs> that will, uh, that will help as well. You just, you got, you, you got that look. So, um, that, that's my tip DMT church. And for anyone that's having issues with light reflections, you know, get the light up. And if you can't do that, like for example, you know, if you have the phone right here and you, you don't want to move it, just tip your glasses in the back just a little bit and you'll get rid of that glare and you can't really tell the difference. Yes. Anyways, other other lights. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you got a you got a couple here. Yeah, the, a couple these more are recommendations. These are some of my favorites. I'm going to I'm going to show you. One of them I'm actually using right now, another one I carry in my kit. Um so um let me go this there we go. Oh, wrong wrong person. Where am I at? I am right here. All right. So, um I discovered these little lights um I don't know, maybe a year ago, eight months ago, something like that, from a company called Viltrox. They make all kinds of uh, different accessories. They do lights. They do the little um, the little uh, adapters, uh, like lens adapters. So if you've got a, a, a Canon lens and you need to put it on a Panasonic camera, you know, you got a little adapter that you can 
you know, fit it to. They do all kinds of cool stuff. Um, but they make these great little lights. These are LED light panels. They're battery powered or, uh, there you go, or they've got, they've got continuous power, which is what I use them with most of the time. Um, they've got a quarter 20 um, uh, little uh, screw hole. Gosh, what is it called? A quarter 20 screw mount. Thank you. Um, in here so that you can put it on a light stand. They actually come with um, like a little adapter so that you can like put it on a light stand and then tilt it or you can put it onto the shoe of your camera, just whatever you need to. It's a very flexible little thing. And it's really cool because it's really bright. Um, it's got like a 95 or a 96, I think it's a 96 CRI, um, which is like the, 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 the quality, the brightness of the light coming out. But it's also... That, that's at 100% brightness. I'm blowing you guys out. But then I can turn it all the way down to 20% brightness. And let's see, off, on. There you go. It's great. And you can also change the color. So from 3300, which is that, that, that amber look, all the way to 55, 56, which is that daylight look. Um, this is a fantastic little light. I'm using, I'm using just a, these are the, like these standard... I think they're called like Sony batteries is what we call them because they're like the batteries that Sony used to have on all their uh, camcorders and stuff. Um, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's a battery standard for uh, accessories, for lights and other things like that. Um, and you can get the big ones, the little ones. And I've put like the big 950s or whatever, the, the ones that stand out about this tall, and the thing will last for a day. But I've shot, uh, with just two of these, I've shot uh, stand-up interviews um, that looked absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, you can, the cool thing about lighting is that uh, you're only really concerned with what the camera frame is picking up. So if you frame a shot, you can literally have lights right outside the camera view. You know, like, like this light is right here. It's now out of the way and, it, and it's, I mean, it's very close to me. Um, so you can have it as bright or as dim as you want, as close or as near as you want. You know, the distance that you get from the person and the brighter the lights gets, the softer it gets, you know? So little things like that. But these are so cool. And they're like 50 bucks, 60 bucks. So again, this is something that I've added to my kit. And I carry this in my uh, my bag with me. Uh, I have two of these in my camera bag. So they're always there. Even if I don't have my big professional lights with me, I've always got these. And I can always prop them up or do you know stick them somewhere if I need to. I'm going to show you a brother um, to this light, which is a round one, a 10 inch round one. And I am using that to live stream with, um, gosh, that really got, that, that really got <laughs> the lighting really adjusted towards it. Oh, good. Bobby's calling me in the middle of the show. I'm going to stop that. <laughs> I was like, that, who's, who's calling me? <laughs> Bobby. Uh, I, I should be able to show it to you now. Okay. So I'm going to cut to the light that's like right above me here. So that right there, that is a Viltrox. It's a 10-inch circular light, um, and I have been using this for a few weeks uh, here to live stream with, and it's basically the same light as the one I just showed you, B basically the same idea. You can run it off the battery. You can run it off of continuous power, um, and it's by color. So you can dial that color in anywhere between like 3,300 um, degrees all the way to 56 um, and so I've got mine dialed into uh, an amount uh, and, a, and a color that will work with this incandescent light that's behind me, can work with these lights that are back here behind me a little bit. So it's all kind of in that same range. And that, again, is in the 50 to $60 range. Uh, Justin has one that he's going to be setting up this week. One is on its way to Bill. So those will be our primary live streaming lights that we're using, um, which means... There's no reason why you can't use them either. And it's cool because they mount on the camera. If you need them to mount on the camera, you can put them on a stand. Um, I'm using these little super clamps, which um, are like these articulating arms, like a, like, like a tension arm. So it's got a, it's got a clamp that you can like screw, you know, clamp onto a shelf and tighten it down. And then you've got this little two or three joint arm with a, with a, 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 a little uh, knob to adjust it. And you get it set just the way you want, and then you tighten it. And so now you got this funny looking arm. In fact, I can show you the funny looking arm. See that little funny looking arm right there? That right there, that's what I'm talking about. That's how you mount them. These things are very, very flexible and they you get a lot of bang for the buck with these. I absolutely 
love them. Do you, do you guys think they look good? I, I like them. Uh, I, I like yeah. all of these, especially how affordable they are. I remember when lights like that used to cost, it was like $300, $400. And oh my it gosh. wasn't LED for, for our little Sony handy cam. So, so when I, when I, almost I, 10 years ago, when I started uh, doing this stuff with, um, with Luria Petrucci back in the Geek Brief TV days, we had these one by ones, uh, which is like a, a 12 inch by 12 inch light panel. Um, and they were like a thousand dollars a piece. I mean, they're fantastic, but they're like a thousand dollars a piece to get good, clean, white, consistent light and stuff. Guys, that even I mean, yeah, it's, don't it's, don't it's don't eat so, don't, so don't drink a Starbucks for a month. Okay, put your Starbucks <laughs> yeah. away for a month and buy one of these. So, uh, Dave, I, I have two questions for you. Yes. One is a primer to a question that a, uh, someone in the live chat asked. Okay. Number one, I, I'm using soft boxes. I'm pretty happy with them. Right. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, the the vid, the lights you're showing us are LEDs. Uh -huh. uh, are soft boxes still relevant? Oh sure. So um, the, what's what's neat about these is they they already have um, diffusion built into them. You don't see the lights uh, the lights in there. Like one of the ones I'm going to mention here in a few minutes, um, like this one, you can actually see the lights in it. Okay, the LEDs in it. Um, but these already have diffusion built into them um again where you play with the brightness the output of it to soften it a little bit or the distance okay or you can get in fact i'll grab it we got hey, dave on a roll. youtube pillow if you guys have seen if you guys have seen my video about uh cheap cheap diy lighting where i tell you to use like a a, a clamp shop light um and we'll put the link to that in the uh, in the description of the uh, of the video once we uh, get this posted. Um, you can use like a shower curtain, you know, or, or or a shower cap that you can like put over the bell of your light and then help diffuse it. You can also for like seven dollars you can buy these diffusion caps basically that can go over it. So I could take that and I could put it over my light. I'm gonna cut to my primary camera here. I can put it over my primary light and then soften it even more. So Alexa, back to normal. Okay. So see, I can soften this light. Ooh, that was a good light right there. Yeah. I am second. Yeah, no. see? yeah that first one is Yeah. So see, now That's now magic. now this light with, with one of these one of these little little covers on it at the right angle. I now have a nice dramatic light. By the way, see mm -hmm. the positioning of this? Much more dramatic, less dramatic. More dramatic, less dramatic. You get the picture? You learning something here, kids? So follow-up question uh, from uh, Bishop Michael in the chat. He's got soft boxes he's using at home to live stream, so that's great. Um, he wants to know, is there any, any when he when they return to church and on a stage, uh, is, oh, I lost the question here. Uh, when they go back into our building at some point, can he still manage to use the soft boxes on stage or well, is that, is okay. that a no go? Well, okay. Um, I mean, if, and I'm assuming he, he just said, he just said back into our building at some point. So back uh, into your, I'm not, okay. I'm not sure if he 100% means on stage or right. if like if those would work in other rooms. So, so what, what, what we're showing you right here where we are couching it and we're phrasing it for live streaming at your home or live streaming at your office. These principles and these lights work for everything. Like I said, these these little fifty dollar LEDs, uh, the battery powered. You know, um, I have done Dave got paid a whole lot of money kind of videos um, with these, and they look great. It's a nice minimal kind of a setup. Uh, tripod, two of these. Um, I didn't even have to, I didn't have to even have to put a hair light behind the guy, uh, because there was another light in the room that I matched the, uh, the, the color of this two that was behind him that served as the hair light. I mean, so yes, you can do, you can, you can make your video studio out of these if you set them and use them properly. Okay. Or up really close, you know, on your desk, you can have one of these on your desk. Like I do. I mean, it's, it's, it's literally, you know, four feet from me. Um, so you've got some flexibility with this. Now, we're going to move into the next stage of doing this, uh, or talking about these, where we're talking about some of the higher-end lights. Um, sometimes they get really expensive, but you get really good quality from it. You want to talk about those now? 
Yes, 100%, because I'm looking at these and I'm like, these aren't studio lights, these are stage lights. Uh, but tell me about these two, because these look like uh, quite an investment, but uh, what makes them different than what you've showed us now? Okay. So th this is when you actually have like a, a budget of more than 100 or $500. Oh, yeah, definitely. So uh, I'm going to actually tell you about one that I absolutely love, and if I had the money, I would buy it, but I don't, so I'm going to buy like the alternative to it, the more budget-friendly. Um, but I, I will be actually adding some, some of these higher-end type of lights uh, to my kit. There's um, a company called Aperture that uh, makes really good lights. They, I mean, y'all, they're, they're just shy of absolutely perfect, and the, their pricing kind of reflects that. Uh, they're very proud of their technology, very proud of their lights. Um, but these are the lights that, that th these are used in movies, they're used in TV shows, they're used in independent films. Um, because with two or three of these, you've got some fantastic looking lighting. With one of these, you've got fantastic looking lighting. Um, where is that screen? I'm going to cut to, I've got a um, screen share that I'll show you here. Okay, so this is the Aperture 120D uh, Mark II. It's, it's the new version, which means, by the way, you can get the previous version for a little bit less. Now, it does have a uh, $745 price tag. Uh, and if you're a videographer or if, if you shoot and, and you want good, good lighting, this is a fantastic price, okay, because this is a high-end light. When you couple this light with, like, a soft dome, uh, I'm trying to see if they actually have a picture. Yeah, so so see that dome that they have mounted on there, that soft box that they have on there? Um, that is producing very clean, soft, white light. And when you are on the other side of that camera and shooting it and getting it lit just right, looks absolutely amazing. So two of these. Um, th there's actually a big brother to this one, which is the 300D. Uh, that costs about a thousand, twelve hundred dollars, right, right in that range. Um, and you can literally, with with that one, okay, with that with that three hundred D, you could actually take that, put it outside the window. So, say like you're shooting a, a room, like a like a like a study or something, you know, for a, for a movie. And you know, the guy's sitting at his desk working, and you want to have sunlight hitting him just right you can actually take that and you stick it outside the window and then put like a sheet in front of it and light that thing up and all day long you have consistent sunlight coming in it, it looks magnificent i mean this is the quality of light we're talking about that 745 dollars is a, is a lot of money um but for the quality it, it's definitely worth it now godox which is a company that um they they make knockoffs, I guess you could say, whatever. I, that has a really negative connotation, but, you know, when you don't have a patent on something, then anybody can, you know, it's like generic drugs. So think of a generic of, uh, of the Aperture style light um, that costs a lot less. The, their equivalent it, of the one... Does it, come, does it come in a white box and it just says lights? Uh, it's Kroger brand. <laughs> yeah, or private selection. Or, yeah, not Boar's Head, go. private selection. <laughs> But um, they, they have one, uh, their equivalent to the 120D is like this Godox SL60. It's a 60 watt, um, puts out about as much power as the, um, as the 300D does. Now, one of the caveats to this um, is that um, to save money in the build, they have a fan that is uh, in the unit. And these things do have to be cooled off. Like you can see the fins right around the outside things. These things do get hot. The, the electronics get hot. So they have a fan in there. But the depending on what you're using this light for, that fan and the kind of mics you're using, that fan noise could show up or it could not. It really depends. We, we have a guy in the, um, in the insiders group, Ryan, uh, who has a couple of these and uses them. And he doesn't have issues with fan noise. Uh, and when I say fan noise, if you're an audio guy, and you're using these really sensitive mics and stuff, you may hear a little bit of that <sighs> coming um, in your thing. You can filter if it that out. Speaking, that's a problem. Do what? I said if it starts speaking, yes. that's a problem. But you may hear a little bit of that, but you can filter that out. You can filter it out with uh, if you're doing something live, like I'm filtering out fan noise um, because I'm using a uh, compressor limiter in here. So. You know, I filter out some of the, the, the room noise of, like, my Drobos and stuff. Um, but
But anyway, for you know, one hundred and fifty dollars, you are approaching the kind of quality and the and the kind of uh, output that you could get for that really expensive one. Just you know, a little bit, a little bit less in the build quality. It may not last as long, uh, but you're getting there. Um, and I'm actually going to get one of these. Um, one of these Godox ones to put out on my set in the garage. I'm going to replace the lighting that I have out there because I've got soft boxes with CFLs inside them that I've had for 10 years and they're starting to deteriorate. So I'm changing that up. But those are really, really good lights. I, I any any of these YouTubers that you see that you know have like oh million subscribers and stuff when they're doing their their stand ups and things like in their little studio or whatever they're using like these aperture lights. Yep. They're using, uh, you know, it's kind of one of those things where you, you look at someone and you say, Oh, they got this great lighting setup." But again, go watch their earlier videos. They start with no light. Then they get that $20 ring light yep. around their webcam. And then they get the, uh, the, uh, the led light that you shared. And then they're moving up to the aperture lights and then they're moving up to multiple lights and angles and hair lights and all that stuff. It is a process. It is an iteration. Oh, absolutely. It is a little bit of progress is better than no progress. Oh, you, don't, absolutely. you don't just go to the grocery store and say, Hey, you want to learn about Jesus? No, thanks. Ah, oh, nerds. All right. Well, sorry. This guy's going to hell. Like you don't do that. It's, it's a relationship. It's tell me about your family. Tell me about your interests. Um, where, where does your family background come from? Where, where does your religion come from? Do you, what do you believe? What do you think? What are your thoughts on the, you know, whatever, you know, like it's, it's a process. It's, it's an iterate, it's an iterative process. Is that redundant? I don't know. Uh, and so just like with our lighting, you know, it, it needs to be, excuse me, just like our discipleship and just like our, you know, sharing the faith, uh, our lighting can be iterative and that's okay. You don't have to have, just like you don't have to know everything about the Bible to be a teacher. You don't have to have $10,000 to start lighting your setup. Just get started with what you have. And the great thing too that I love is these lower budget options can use things that you already have in the house or 20 bucks. You've got a light that you can use while streaming, but also... Uh, you can keep it in your kit for future videos. So it's not just, we'll never use this again. Um, and that's, so I'm not going to spend money on it. You can and will use this again, especially when you find success because you've invested in your live stream, which is investing in your audience, which is showing you care. And I think <clears throat> it's really important to note that, you know, pastors will focus on, they'll go to all these conferences and they'll focus on how to preach better and how to teach better and mm -hmm. and all these sorts of things. The important part about lighting is you just have to care. You have to care and you have to realize that it is important. It's important that you look good on camera. It's important that you're investing in investigating how people are doing it better, looking at other people that are having large audiences. What does their lighting look like? What does their environment look like? How does it compare to yours? It's doing the research. It's the same thing that you would do for any other part of your ministry. You wouldn't just go buy the cheapest children's curriculum and throw it at the kids. You would go to children's ministries that are doing it well and ask them how they're doing it well and look at the way they're doing it well. The same thing is true for everything we're talking about here. It's about caring about the fact that, like Justin said, you're, you're just, you're, taking the effort, you're putting in the research, you're looking for the materials, and then you're applying all that knowledge so that uh, you have a better experience for your parishioners. Um, it, it's, a, it's all about removing the distractions. You know, guys, we could get on the soapbox about, well, people shouldn't be distracted. But the fact of the matter is because of all of our technology and everyone has a phone in their pocket and everyone has an iPad and all this stuff and everyone can get everything instantly. Yes, we are geared towards being distracted people. And if we're geared towards being distracted people, then let's remove the distractions. One of the biggest distractions you can have when you're doing these types of things is your lighting. So that's why we're giving you all these resources and that's the reason why I'm so intense about it in this conversation. I don't know why, but the fact <laughs> of the matter is we just want you to care. And so just, just make it a priority. That's the number one thing. Just make it a priority. Start with what you can start with, build up. But whenever your pastor goes, why are we spending this on this? Then if you've done your research, you have all the knowledge, all the power to make the decision. Your pastor is behind you 100%. You've got a great product, and um, more people are paying attention to what's actually being said instead of what is going on with the pastor's eyes right now. Right. Before we go, 
I want to tell you, actually, before I even tell you, um, one of the questions, guys, it doesn't have anything to do with lighting, but it has to do with, re uh, with, with uh, live streaming. One of the questions that we get a lot is um, how do we um, stream to multiple platforms? I mean, we see that all the time, Justin. Uh, you can vouch yep. for it. Uh, people are always asking. Um, and we tell everybody pretty much without fail um, to use a company like, in this case, Restream. So if you go to getrestream.com, uh, you'll get a $10 credit when you sign up. Restream is really cool because it lets you, um, it, for one thing, it lets you maximize your current internet connection. Okay. So if, uh, like right now, I'm using vMix. I, I talk about vMix all the time. I love it. Um, vMix has built into it the ability for me to send out this live stream to multiple destinations. What it does, though, is it uses more of my computer to do it. So right now, I am sending out a stream. It's a three or four megabit, whatever it is, stream. And um, my computer is, like, compressing that video and sending it out the line. Now, if I were to be sending it to both, like, YouTube and to Facebook, then it would basically be doubling up on its work and sending it to those places. Um, what Restream does is lets you send it to just that one place, and then you connect your other account. So you connect your account, like your YouTube account, like your Facebook group, like your Facebook page. Um, if you use Twitch, if you have an audience on Twitch or Twitter or wherever, you can, uh, and even some that you've never even heard of, and even something that no one else knows about, some homegrown live stream platform that you've made that you have an RTMP stream, you know, and a streaming server name and a stream key, you can put that in and send it to wherever. I mean, it's really cool. What it lets you do is you send your stream once up to them, and then they syndicate it to all those other platforms. So you can multi-stream. You can live stream to multiple locations, but not overload your internet connection and not overload your computer. So, guys, I cannot tell you enough. And, and, and if you work with Restream like we do, then that helps Church Training Academy, and we greatly appreciate it. GetRestream.com. Get $10 credit when you sign up. Guys, uh, is Restream a good service or not? Tell me. Amazing. Super easy. We use it at my last church. Um, there, there, there are features that you didn't even get into. Right. Uh, one thing that I'm experimenting and you're experimenting with is you could possibly even just use Restream to just broadcast your live stream. Yeah. They've got a, a very simple, easy to use studio that you can do that from. Uh, and then as well as, um, you know, automatic notifications, um, they have a unified chat that, that I like unified chat. That was it. Too. Yeah. So instead of like, Oh, where's all this chat coming from? You can just focus on Restream. I really like that, uh, and I, I think it's honestly quite affordable because instead of buying another computer so you can – or bringing another computer and hooking it up and sending the signal and bringing it in with more software, right. they just do it all for you. I think it's incredibly affordable to just get that off your plate, multi-stream. And also, you know, it's I think it's worth it just for a few months to see where people are watching. Mm -hmm. uh, even if you just want to do one platform, see where other people might be watching. That's how we – use Restream is to see what content is connecting with which people on mm -hmm. which platform. It's invaluable for us. We're, we're using Restream right now, even though we're only streaming to our YouTube channel. You know, the we've, we've made a conscious effort to build up our YouTube channel, so we're not doing this show live over on Facebook. I could flip a switch, and all of a sudden, we're live on Facebook. I literally could go click, and we're live on Facebook, but I'm not. But we're prepared to do that. We just send everything to Restream and then just decide where we want to go. In fact, if I wanted to do just a Facebook Live um, here and not even go to the YouTube channel, just something for the Church Media Hacks group, I click a switch and I'm live in there. It is really cool. So GetRestream.com. Go check it out. It's fantastic. Now, I want to show you guys one more thing before we go. I've been using this type of light for years. I was telling you that when I started working with Luria back in the Geek Brief days, back in whoo, 2007, 2008, um, we were using these lights from um, from a company called, um, oh my gosh, I can't even remember now. Anyway, they're like the original LED lights, panels, light panels, that's the name of the company, light panels. Um, they were like the original, and they were like a thousand bucks a piece, and they were great. Um, in fact, I have one sitting over here. It's not that it, it's a portable one. It's not the the full size one, but it's still working after ten years or gosh, fifteen years. It's great. Um, 
but there's a company that a couple of companies out there that make those types of lights uh, that I've been using for you years. Neewer, N E E W E R. Neewer is kind of like a a, a staple in in our our video industry. Um, everybody has you know maybe a tripod from Neewer. They're they're kind of like the um, um, you know, like the Kroger brand of, of stuff. They, they, they come up with, uh, uh, very easy to use, very affordable stuff. I've been using those for years until I found this company, GVM. GVM is making, in fact, I'm going to go to my full screen here, guys. GVM, this is a light panel that has 500 and something lights in it. Costs a little over a hundred bucks. Um, it is multiple, it has multiple um, colors, so or, or not multiple, but by color, right? So I can dial in the intensity that I want for um, the amber light. I can dial in the intensity I want for the uh, daylight. Uh, I can do all of one, all of the other. I can mix them together, whatever. Um, I can run this thing off of two batteries for a long time. I can also just plug it in and have it there all day. Um, it has a diffusion card that you can put in there. So if I need to have just the harsh light, just bulk light, I can do that. If I need to soften it, I can put this in. Um, these things are solid and it's kind of cool and sexy because it's red and it looks good with all the rest of my video gear. One of the things that I really like about this, I'll just show you. You see this little, here's the mount, right? So this, you know, you, you loosen the screw and then you put it in on your light stand, right? And then you tighten the screw. It also has that same hole right here in the middle, which means instead of lighting or, or putting it on my stand like this, I can also put it on my stand like this and have really good control over it. And this, when I put barn doors on this or put a um, put a soft box or something on this, having the ability to have this like free like that and not be encumbered by the frame, like if I tilt it down, is really cool. That's that's worth the price of admission for me. Just that that collar that I can use for for two different ways. So that one is a hundred, a little over a hundred. They have one that has uh, less lights, about a third less lights. I've got a couple of those. Um, this one's just much brighter. But you know those are like fifty, sixty dollars a piece. You can buy a kit for like two. By the way, we're gonna have links in our description for like all of this stuff in there. Um, that light, I, I love the little brothers to it. I love those. I carry several of those like in a Pelican case, and those are like the ones I take on my uh, video shoots, and they have never failed me. Have you guys played with uh, any of those yet? Nope, but I want one now. <laughs> <laughs> They're awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, hey, real quick, one, one more question okay. here, uh, and normally we would say this is probably time, but one of our newest insiders has joined the show. Holly has entered the battleground. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, Holly has a really good question okay. and something that I think uh, does, that a lot of people have issues. And, and because we love her, uh, we, we want to make sure we get our answer here. Absolutely. She said, small church, beautiful stained glass windows that get pure sunlight in mm. the late afternoon. Love that. When I stream with this in the background, it washes out totally. Yes. Is there any way to correct this? Oh, absolutely. Here's the, um, <laughs> the short answer. Yep. You fix your lighting. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what you have to do, and this is this is true with anything. Remember, at the very beginning of the uh, the show, when we were talking about using your um, using your window um, as your primary light source, um, you know, which is perfect again for if you're just going to like go live and no light or something, go stand by the window and you look really good. Okay, um, and how if you are sitting at your dining table and the window is behind you and the camera adjusts because of the brightest thing in the room. So looking outside that window, things just look crystal clear and wonderful, and you're sitting in shadow. That's the same problem that she's having. What you have to do, right. Holly, and everybody, is if you're going to use those gorgeous stained glass windows and the light streaming through them, if you're going to use those, then you have to overcompensate on the subject with other lighting by using something like this like this this light, like this GVM I just told you about. Or remember remember that aperture light that we were talking about, that 120 Mark D or the Godox um, generic equivalent? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Something like that would have enough power, especially if it's mounted close, would have enough power to light the subject so that you can then expose the subject properly 
And by doing that, you're putting a lot of light on that person. So you're actually turning down your exposure. You're turning down your um, your either your shutter speed. I wouldn't, but um, you, you could do your shutter speed or the um, ISO or the aperture ring. You can like darken the image so that that person is exposed properly. And in doing so, the things behind them are going to become dimmer, or in this case, more proper. Instead of being blown out because you're exposing for the person that's not lit well and all the stuff behind them is blown out, you're going to expose for the person and have more light on them. And then when you when they're properly exposed, the stuff behind them is darker, and therefore you see those rays of light maybe even coming in. You know, you get the you get the the definition, the fidelity of what's going on in the background. And if you're using a really good lens, like um, like if you're doing this with like a mirrorless camera or with your DSLR, and you've got a really fast lens on there, then that person is like really nice and sharp, and that depth of field it back back behind you is kind of blurry and soft in the back, and it just looks sexy. Sorry, I get excited about stuff like that. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I I think that will absolutely help. And Holly, you're a CTA insider because you went to church training academy slash join and joined up. You are in the insider group. So tell us in the insider group, show us some pictures of your stream or, mm -hmm. or whatever you have that's looking, having issues. Um, let's experiment. We can experiment together and kind yeah. of track this project with you. Uh, as part of being the insiders program. So go to the group. This is what the group is for. Share the stream, your questions. We'll take a look at it. Even if you don't have these lights and you can't get these lights by a certain time, if you need them by a certain time, we can work with you to find other alternatives yeah. uh, to other light sources that you can use that you may already have. Yeah, just rent a rent a, a the sun or something or a star. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just do what uh was it Joshua? Just do what Joshua did and just keep the sun in the in the sky for yeah, another twelve hours. Exactly. Or twenty four hours. Man, I need to read that again. <laughs> yeah. Where's your come on, your Bible knowledge, dude? You went to you get you did theology stuff. I went to public church in Houston. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't home churched. <laughs> uh hopefully everybody has been getting um some good value out of this. I really hope so. I hope this has been helpful. I hope this has answered some questions. I hope this has sparked some ideas in you. If, um, you know, like I said, we're going to have the links or like in the description, it's going to be like a buttload of links and stuff that are in there. By the way, if you, anytime that we put out a link for you of a product or a service or something like that, you can almost guarantee that using that link that we're providing you is actually going to be helping us as well. And we're not going to share stuff with you that we don't believe in. So getrestream.com, we live by that. So if, if it's good enough for us, it'll be great for you. These lights, we love these lights. I, I've got all these different flavors of lights, and I, I thoroughly enjoy them. So I can tell you that these types of lights work. So if I give you a link, then uh, you can trust that you're going to get some really good quality of it, and that always helps us. So please do that. And above all, take everything that we've talked about here and in this entire series, um, apply it, okay? Put it to work and use it to go change lives.